I'm Missy Bauer with B&M Crop Consulting. Uh, we're located in Coldwater, Michigan. We've been doing a lot of work uh, dealing with corn planters and setup, and that's why I'm going to share some information with you on today. Uh, if you're interested in more information from us, you can see our information here for Facebook, Twitter, our website, as well as an email address. So you can always follow up with us for some more information. So one thing that's really important this time of the year is get your planter in the shop and start to get things set up. We talk about corn planter set up all the way from the hitch pin to the closing wheels. You think about what's our goal of what we're doing with this planter is to really strive toward more uniformity, better ear counts out in the field. So how do we get good ear counts out in the field in uniformity? It comes from two main principles, what we call picket fence stands and what we call photocopied plants and ears. That's our focus. When you're thinking about adding something to your planter or trying to make a decision if you should change something or replace something, think about how it would affect uniformity of spacing and uniformity of emergence and uh, overall ear size. So when you think about what really makes the difference in how this planter is set up, it goes back to what we call this microenvironment around the seed. So the seed's placed in here. What's the environment around the seed like? Because any little change, whether it's in planting depth, seed to soil contact, residue being pitched, down pressure settings, gauge wheels not being set right, closing wheels not being correct, or even an issue with the seed bed can affect this microenvironment around the seed and therefore cause variability in germination out in the field. So we go through and we do corn planter setup from that hitch pin to the closing wheels. And in doing that, I have what I call my 10 point planter checklist. So we have these 10 things that we concentrate on for getting the planter ready in the shop. Now we got another list that we go when we talk about field settings, but this is what we want to touch base on today. So the transmission is one of the first things we look at. If you've got a planter with a hex drive shaft going all the way across, that's one of the things I really like to do is actually spin that planter with one of these little motors. Whether you're a chain drive like we here, have here on this planter or you're a cable drive, we can pick out a lot of issues with the transmission system while we're in the shop before we ever have problems out in the field itself. On the cable drives, we've certainly seen where it may be an issue with the cable itself or maybe it's where that's uh, going into the actual meter. So we do a lot of looking and comparing across there. Certainly as we've moved to electric, electric's made uh, the issues with the transmission pretty much go away, but we still want to take a look at those. So even if you have electric drive, we'll still go ahead and run each one of those meters and just look and make sure that's running smoothly, no hesitations uh, are, being, are found there. Another important aspect on the planner is going to be on the down pressure side of things. So we've seen big improvement with airbags compared to springs, but also seen even greater improvement as we've moved to the hydraulic side of things. So we want to make sure we're running a, a good down pressure system. On your parallel arms, it's important not to let these get too loose or start to get wear in here. As you can see in the picture here, these bushings have gotten wore out and they've wore enough that we've actually egg shaped the arms. So the fix here is now I've got to replace my arms as well as the bolt and bushing. So we really want to try to keep those uh, tightened up. One of the other probably biggest uh, problem areas I see on planters today is the gauge wheels are not set tight enough. So I'm going to show you a real quick example here of making sure your gauge wheels are set right. So in setting the gauge wheels, it's really important to make sure we get these tight enough. Of course, our adjustment's going to come from back here, whether it's a cam assembly or shims on, on the case of this planter. But we need to make sure these are tight. The way to check that, I'm going to shop here is lift it up like it would be in the running position. Try to pull out on here. Make sure that there's no space in between the inside of this gauge wheel and the disc opener. And I want it tight enough that if I try to pull, wiggle back and forth, there's no slop in here. That tells me I'm pretty good back here. I don't have a shaft that's worn out or needs rebuilt. And then also, as I go to let go of this, I want to basically be able to hear the rubber slide down the metal. Okay, if it's just slamming down, then again, I know I don't have these tight enough. Because the tendency in the field is going to be, as these are getting pushed through the soil, to really pull out. So I want to make sure I've got these snug enough here in the shop to make sure that uh, they can stay good out in the field. So again, no space in between here, no movement as I try to wiggle it back and forth, let go and it just slowly kind of slides uh, down the disc opener there. So that's going to be really important, making sure those are set right. That's a real problem area that we see on the planters. Your opening disc is something we want to pay attention to, making sure they're the correct diameter, and then also that your point of contact is set right. We can check that 
with the business cards. It's a little bit different on the red planner where we really don't have a point of contact. Therefore, we need to make sure our firming point's in good condition. Also on the John Deere, Kinsey, White Great Plains planters, we want to make sure our seed tube guard is in good shape. So in this example here, this is one inch new. If it gets down to three quarters of an inch, then I know I want to replace that. We're also big fans of running a seed firmer in the field. We've gotten really good improvement in uniformity of planting depth as well as a more uniform germination. The last thing on the planter would be with the closing wheels. Uh, we want to run those closing wheels if they're solid wheels in a staggered position. We found that probably the most universal closing wheel system out there today is two cast iron closing wheels with a drag chain. Not that there's not other ones and there are for certain uh, situations or in tougher no-till type conditions, uh, but this is going to cover a lot of the bases. On the case planters, we really got to pay attention to these closing discs and making sure we're not letting them get too wore down. So we want to make sure we're measuring those and keeping up on those. So that's kind of just a real quick synopsis here, uh, planter setup. Uh, what's our goal? Try to get the planter set up right to try to improve uniformity out in the field and to improve the ear counts that, that we're trying to get out there. So if you're interested in more information, there's more information on uh, planter setups, infield settings, and on a good stand uh, available through our website, our Facebook and Twitter uh, pages as well, and our emails there if you're interested in contacting us for more information. We do a lot of one-on-one -on -one planter inspections. Uh, in Michigan, if that's something you're interested in, or we come to your farm and basically go through your whole planner with you. So contact us if you're interested in more information.